I'm recording this conversation. This mom is making public her very private conversation with the Division of Family and Children's Services. Jalissa Stanley wants to expose what she calls troubling truths about our child welfare system. <laughs> she is fighting to regain custody of her two living children, taken by the state when her oldest died in his bed. Every time I had to say bye to my kids, that really hurts. And I can tell that it's hurting them. I don't see how someone can sit back and allow someone else to hurt for so long. The Stanley son, Giovanni, had a long list of medical concerns from birth. <laughs> but doctors began to wonder if something at home was making his condition worse. No one could figure it out before he died. Police ruled the parents committed no crime, but DFAX nor the attorney for the living children seemed convinced. We have to make sure 100% that this is the best decision on behalf of, the, of these children. That's one of the DFAX employees that agreed to take another look at how the case was being handled. The Stanleys want to know why it has lingered, forcing their children to live in separate foster homes for nearly five years. Their daughter removed from the Stanley's arms when she was only a few weeks old. And the fact that you've had a number of case managers has impacted this case very negatively. The family can count off six caseworkers, the most recent accused of sitting silent in court as DFAX's own attorney blasted the parents over information she knew wasn't true. Nobody corrected this man. The guardian ad litem goes as far as and says, well, you know, the parents aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe we should think about um, fines or maybe even putting them in jail. You want to say that and I did what I was instructed to do? In the recording, DFAX promises at the next court hearing to set the record straight. But the hearing came and went. Stanley says no one said a thing. How important do you think it is, the judge's opinion of you and your husband? I think that is the most important thing. And if someone's saying you openly break the rules, defy the court. He's not going to trust us. But neither of the parents' own attorneys stood up for them either. As the Reveal researched their case, we found a document the Stanley say they've never seen. A document they say proves a key defects witness has made conflicting statements. I need for you to ensure that your attorneys are proactive. Because it doesn't sound like they've done a very good job either. The parents have had to rely on public defenders. Stanley's most recent attorney said in an email, I understand this is a terrible process. I came on the case late, but I will try my best to make sure the children are placed back with you. He was on the case for seven months. How many times have you met with him? None. I've never seen him. How many times have you talked to him on the phone? No. No bother. He, too, has decided to drop all of his indigent defense cases. So who's your attorney now? I have no idea. When's your next court hearing? I don't know. It's a lot of I don't knows. Yes. State law requires a status hearing every six months, but there hasn't been a hearing in this case since last June. Stanley has so many questions, and what's worse, she says, okay. so do her kids. Mommy? I want to go to your house. I want to go to your house, and all I can say is I'm trying. The Stanleys usually get to see their daughter a few hours a week, visits with their son, or twice a month. Not on a playground, but in an office so a therapist can be present. They have tables in it with chairs, and there's like a whiteboard in the front. There's nothing there for a child. So they bring games, and they do their best to play things like hide and seek. Hiding behind chairs. Doors. But with every visit, she is confronted with the same question. Who is our child welfare system helping if this is how it works? It's the hardest thing I've ever had to experience. I have to look in their bedroom. There's empty beds. And I haven't shown one time that I do not care. And I just wish that we could be a family on the park like we used to be. The court didn't even seem to realize the Stanleys needed a new attorney until I started asking questions. I'm told it's up to the judge to keep the case moving forward and that there were two hearings scheduled in the past year, but neither of them happened, likely because of the turnover in attorneys. Turnover that is happening again. While the Stanleys certainly hope to regain custody of their children, a family member is going through the adoption approval process in case the judge finds them unfit.